Let a be a subset of the real numbers. If the supremum of a or the infimum of a exists, they are unique. So the infimum and the supremum of a set are unique if they exist. That's what we'll be proving in today's Wrath of Math lesson, and it's a pretty snappy, easy proof. Quickly, recall what the supremum and the infimum of a set are. Let's just let this line represent an ordered list of the numbers in a set. Then this set is bounded above by a number over here, for example, and bounded below by a number over here. But of course, a given upper bound is not necessarily the least upper bound. There are other upper bounds that may be smaller. The supremum is the least upper bound. And similarly for the infimum, a given lower bound may not be the greatest lower bound. We could find greater lower bounds, and the greatest of them all is the infimum. That's the greatest lower bound. Keeping these definitions in mind makes the proof super easy. We'll begin by proving that the supremum of a set must be unique. To begin the proof, we'll just say let S1 and S2 be suprema of our set A. Then if we can show that S1 is equal to S2, that will show that there cannot exist distinct suprema of a single set, and thus the supremum of a set is unique. It's often tempting to start a proof like this with a contradiction assumption. We might suppose for contradiction that S1 is not equal to S2, but we're going to contradict this by just showing that S1 is equal to S2, so we don't need the contradiction assumption at all. We're going to end with our conclusion. It is a direct proof. So it's very easy. Since S1 and S2 are suprema of A, they are both upper bounds of A by definition. Then, since S1 is a supremum, it must be the least upper bound of A. So, since S1 and S2 are bounds, and S1 is a least upper bound, S1 must be less than or equal to S2. However, the same thing applies to S2. It is a supremum of A, so it is a least upper bound. So it must also be less than or equal to S1, another upper bound. Now, of course, S2 cannot both be greater than and less than S1, so the only possibility that remains is that they are equal. This proves that the supremum of a set is unique, and as you might guess, the proof that the infimum is unique is practically the same. We'll say let m1, little m1, and little m2, let m1 and m2 be infima of A. Again, the proof goes the exact same way. We take two infima of A, and we will show that they must be equal, and so distinct infima of the same set can't exist, so the infimum is unique. M1 and M2 are both lower bounds of A, and since M1 is an infimum of A, it is the greatest lower bound. So it must be the case that M1 is greater than or equal to M2. But the same thing applies to M2. M2 is also an infimum of A, so it must be greater than or equal to all other lower bounds, which includes M1. M2 can't possibly be less than and greater than M1, so the only possibility that remains is that they are equal, and this completes the proof. Thus, if the supremum of a set exists, then it is unique, and if the infimum of a set exists, it is unique as well. Uniqueness is super useful, so it's a good thing to have proven. Hope this video helped you understand the proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Links his music in the description. I don't know about you, I don't know about you, I don't know about you, didn't care about me, get a